you got a little less than half an hour's time, I'll show you how to save yourself about $400 and rebuild one of these things on your own. Classic Model Trains. This episode here, we're going to be rebuilding a ZW Transformer. This one is the ZW250. Generation 1, first Transformers ever made. Came out around 45, 44, 43, 48. Something like that. But we want to update it. A lot of changes have taken place over the last 70 years. What's my math? These are the things that we, why we would want to rebuild or update them. We're going to get rid of the old carbon rollers and we're going to install and some newer updated rollers in which have a different compound. We're getting rid of the old rectifier disc and we're going to install a diode in there which is used for the whistle operation on the whistling tenders. We're going to be replacing the really slow acting and heavy amp load circuit breaker in favor of a newer one with newer technologies. We're going to completely disassemble and clean up the reversing unit in it so that way it doesn't give you any problems over time. We're going to be installing a new 120 volt power cord on them. Over time they have a tendency to get a little tore up. And this is just kind of my favorite thing to do. Them cloth covered wires, you know, they've worked. They've worked for a long time. Do they make me nervous? Sometimes. So I'm going to be putting in some new high temperature wire in the place of the cloth wires. This whole process here has taken me probably three days to do the work, learn how to do the work, film the work, edit the work, put the work together. But with less than half an hour, we'll show you guys how to do it. Let's get started. Here, there's a few items you're gonna have to have. An illustrated parts breakdown of the independent control knobs, an electrical wiring diagram of the specific ZW that you're rebuilding. Because remember, there's three of them. Some stuff that's referred to as fish paper. It's a non-conductive paper. Get some high temperature 14 gauge wire. It's gonna need some miscellaneous small screws. Six by 32 by one, or you might need a four by 40 dash one. Four by 40 screws, half inch long or less, plus washers. So I was at the hardware store and I didn't wanna make two or three trips. So I went ahead and picked up all the sizes that I think that I might need. Some premium carbon conductive grease. Get some of this stuff here. It's a cleaner, lubricant, and it, protect, and it protects the brass contacts inside there. This is supposed to be the cat's meow, so we're just gonna give it a shot. And last but not least, a rebuild kit that can be picked up off of eBay. Type in ZW Transformer Rebuild. You can buy up one of these. New electrical cord, new top screws, new binding posts, new binding post screws, new bulbs, and bezels. These are the rivets for the copper roller conductors, updated diodes, updated breaker switch. So this is all the stuff that we are going to be working on putting in there. So this top cover comes off with just these four simple screws. Number two screwdriver. When these covers are stuck on there, it's because these light bulbs are kind of kind of hanging up down inside here a little bit. If you have a hard time getting that off, Take them bulbs out. Now this is the part right here where you want to get your, your diagram out. I've got a link to this down below. And familiarize yourself. It's almost just like it is in there. There's six wires that's coming off of this coil right in here, the transformer. And then six wires have got to be disconnected. So you can see them running right through here. And it's also got the wiring coming in for the extension cord, the main power supply, and they're coming in actually up here on the top. So we got to get this transformer out of the way first, get rid of this cord because, you know, the 50s. So I'm going to root around here. I'm going to decide I'm going to give a number to each one of these cables, and I'm going to label them up in here. I'm going to desolder them, and then I'll give you guys a little update on what I found or didn't find that makes it interesting or hard to get in or out. Well, I was looking at my skim mat here, and I was tracing all the wires coming out of the coil, going over to the rheostat, well, the controls. And 
it wasn't quite lining up. This had colors on it that, that weren't there. And uh, so I had to start going around and changing my schematic. The majority of the stuff is, is written in, but I made to write down extra wires and then I labeled them. This is the number two over here, which comes off the back. Number one comes off over here. You know, I mean, there's, there's a significant amount of, I gotta know how to read a schematic and uh, write everything down so you can take it apart and put it back together. This is helping. I suppose when I'm all said and done with this, I'll PDF it and I'll put it on my Facebook page or something like that so a guy can see what I did with this. Here's the uh, 120 volt coming in, shotters into the side of the coils over here. And there is six connects, disconnects. Two over on this side over here, two that go directly over here, one that goes up into the circuit breaker off the bottom, then another one that comes off right up over in here. Now on the bottom of this old girl, there's some 5 16 inch bolts. Take these, loosen them up. I already took these out. You know, these were sitting up in here, holding the top in. They just pull out. Now I can open up this. I've kind of, oh, we were supposed to tie those back. Well, we'll do that when we put it in. And I did all my desoldering just right, six of them, and this gets it out. So here's the top view facing me. Here's what's going on on the bottom. This is 120 volt coming in. I've got two tans that go over to the right side. And then there's two black ones that go over to the left side. This was going to the circuit breaker that's inside there. And then the one off the top is basically 12 volt power going to the light. We're done with this for now. We're gonna get in here and start rooting around some more. And then bolts that were down under here, I was loosening up. I just took those out after I moved that coil, got those plates out of the way and the, the metal base plate on the bottom. This is what happened when I bought this off the seller on eBay. I begged her and begged her to make sure she packs that thing really good because I knew they were heavy. And it showed up broken because, you know, it slid around in the box with these things sticking out. But what I'm going to do now is we're going to get these, these wires back here marked A, B, C, and D going across and desolder those. There's, you, can, you can see them, so maybe if I can get my head out of the way. A, B, C, D, and then we'll get the common wire right here unsoldered also. After taking this hookup panel off the back over here, we don't got hardly any wires left at all. These two big long ones here are running down to these diodes, these old ones that we're gonna swap out. Um, and they're clearly marked on the schematic here with the diodes running or the, the rectifier discs, I should, I'm sorry, rectifier discs, they're gonna be replaced with diodes. So I'm gonna desolder these two wires out of the way. And then these wires that are operating these light bulbs, like this crossover one right here, which is dignified by this one right there. Well, I'm gonna get that out of the way just so we can work on one side of these things at a time, not have a bunch of dang wires in the way. I guess it's kind of handy that this is broken out of the back of the transformer because I can show you how to desolder these old wires off of these. Open up the strain relief right here. I use the side, side cutters. <laughs> Remember what we used to call these in the old days? And you get your really sweet soldering iron out because it puts out a lot of heat really fast. Get the solder nice and toasty. Oh, there we go. And that wire just comes off. Now that I got all the wires disconnected from this old circuit breaker, we'll just pop it out. Here's a reason why you need that 440 by one machine bolt. To pull these off, there's a little tiny hole in the bottom right there, right in the center. And you thread this little bugger in, and then you start to screw him in, and it is working as a puller to pull these handles off. All the way to the end. And then just gently work it off the shaft. But the only two wires we got left to kind of take out is these rectifier discs. These are gonna be replaced. It's sneaking around up to here. You can see this one right here sneaking around up into here. 
So we're just going to get that, get that out of the way. They're clearly marked on this schematic. So I do believe of what they're doing going up to the first terminal over here. Sure, over there. And these wires back over here. This is the pickup wire for the inner roller. So I'm gonna desolder these off right here and here. You take this regular screw out right here and this regular screw out right over here. And you can end up taking off this reversing switch right here. Once all the wires and all the stuff, this is that bridge rectifier right here, which is not gonna no longer be used, it's gonna be updated. This is the fish paper. This is the insulative paper here, and I guess if they're all wet or oily, because oil can conduct electricity a little bit, these ones don't look bad at all. I think that they could be reused. Oh yeah, sure there's copper contact right there. And this connection of stuff. I do believe that you're supposed to take this pin out. This pin is sitting right up in here. It's being held on by spring pressure. Squish this in. He's got a spline on him. They're knurled right here and they only pull out one direction. You gotta pull them out the direction that the knurl is on. Well, see how everything kind of falls apart? That's why you get yourself one of these right here. And this will help you put it all back together. That allows this outer arm to come off. Didn't even have to take that Jesus clip off. Look at that. I'll practice on this one side and then I'll be really good when I, when I get to this other side. Yeah, sure. And then, oh yeah, there's all these parts. This guy right here is stopping our progress from taking this apart. You can just see him. Right, right down there. Knock that out with a punch. This lifts out. I'm trying to get this all taken apart tonight. Organize this stuff so I can try to glue this. I'm gonna try some CA glue on there and see if that might work. To change out these posts, they're crimped in. I guess it might be a bit of a benefit that this is broken out because it gives me a really easy opportunity to show you how I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna take the Dremel, I'm gonna rub back and forth on this a little bit till the rivet part is gone, but without getting too far into the brass parts because we need that. You grind that little peened over edge off, take, take the binding post nut off, and then if you twist, get it till it spins, pull it out, yeah. That makes it makes it pretty easy. I suppose, you know, if you're doing it in in the body, because it wouldn't be broken off, hopefully like mine. Grind it down like that. Get all this conductive dust everywhere and pop it out. So that's how that is. This brass plate right here will end up being reused. So you gotta be careful not to go into it too deep. We're gonna take this rectifier disc off. It's just being held on by this metal clip right here. So you bend these up and that's going to release that. And all this stuff right here is, is gonna go away. Now to take apart this area here to clean all this, there's a rivet right in here. And the part that's riveted over, you wanna take that and, and just carefully drill off so I've got a 3 16 inch drill bit and I just want to take off the end of the rivet but not go down in too deep. Oh, there's timing pins on here that hold this on. If I can file off the ridge from the rivet a little more. Spacer was in behind this plate. There's our rivet, we're gonna reuse it. Spring assembly. What we wanna do is we wanna clean up all these contacts in here. These are in really pretty poor shape. Clean up this stuff right back in here. That there seems to be the way that it came apart. So I've got these contacts all cleaned up right here. 
And I just used mineral spirits with my little dish here and I cleaned up all the oil and grease that might have been on there in the dirt. Scrubbed it all down. I did use some of this stuff here, which is supposed to kind of have a protective coating that it leaves behind. I don't know. I'm not a chemical guy. Everybody likes to use chemicals for things and it's like, you know, I use this here fiberglass pencil to clean up these brass contacts right through here. We're going to put some conductive grease on them here in a little bit. So it's like, well, you know, how many 9,000 different coatings does a guy need? All this stuff is cleaned up and ready to go. Here's the scary part. That dang pin right here. Now we get to drill it and tap it for a 440 bolt. This is a 332nd drill bit. And of course you got to get right in the center of this thing. It's like we're in there about 9 sixteenths of an inch. Now we're going to tap it. Hopefully that was as easy as drilling it. That really wasn't bad. Tap's easy enough because it's made out of brass. Drilled and tapped. We can take our diode, put it on our diode holder. That ought to keep us in operation. I seen a video where one guy drilled out these two rivets right here and right here to remove this piece of insulated material. And after I got down this far, I, I just couldn't figure out a reason why I would want to do that. You know, if a guy wanted, you could drill these out and, uh, you know, remove this piece and then put it back on with them eighth inch pop rivets. But I just, I couldn't, I couldn't figure out why I'd want to do that. So we'll begin the reassembly process here. I cleaned this up with just some Dawn dish soap and a toothbrush under some simple water. Put your spring on here. Maybe that's the reason why this guy took this off because it made it easier to work on. So we currently have something that looks like this. That spacer goes on. When this plate gets put on, it's got to be put on where the two contacts go over here towards this direction and the single contact goes towards these pins. So since this is kind of directional, it's going to go on like this. Now I've got these 440 screws that I purchased made out of brass. We can see if we can use this to pull it back onto the shaft. And that is how to clean up a reversing unit. Once you're done screwing in your screw, make sure that your reversing unit, it centers nice and easy. No binding up or nothing like that. Now, those little contacts that are underneath there, see them right here. I got me a little dollop of that there conductive grease. And I'm going to put it a little bit on these two contacts over here. And then we'll roll it this way and we can get to these contacts. One is easily seen right here. The other one is just a little bit underneath. And hopefully this will return this to many, many more years of successful, successful service. I clean these throttle pickups with this fiberglass pencil, carefully giving her a scrub on the inside here where all that dirty grease and stuff was at. Same thing with these discs here. Replacing these carbon rollers is pretty straightforward. You just get yourself a needle nose pliers and you break the old one out. And once it's removed, get a small side cutter, cut this pin, and things kind of fly all over the place. Put your new roller in, put your pin in. Use a, I'm using a vice grip. You just give it a little bit of a peen. Make sure your roller turns. Do this four times for each one of these little rollers. And the last thing to clean is going to be the side of this coil on this transformer. This one's got a lot of stuff on it. It's got carbon from the rollers deteriorating. I'm going to clean it up with this fiberglass pencil. Make these shiny again. We're building new power leads for the junction block on the back of the transformer. We need four of them. So I've got this 14 gauge high temperature wire, my fancy robo strips here, and we only want to strip off a quarter inch. This is just a normal crimp connector right here. And of course I don't want to, I don't want to crimp connect it. I'm going to solder it. Make sure the connector gets hot enough to wick the solder in. And this makes excellent connectors. 
for our outputs. This lower case has come out real nice. I glued it yesterday and I just used some CA glue. I didn't put any on the outside because I didn't really want to see it out here. So far it's holding it really well, so I am quite happy with that. They could send us these new output posts right here. On the, underneath this washer, it's it's got some anti-don't-twist-around capabilities. Insert it. We'll insert our wire. And they give us these fancy nuts here. So here's what the inside's going to look like. <clears throat> with all the binding posts installed, studs, the common bar, and then my high-temperature wiring, and then my common wire that'll end up going to the circuit breaker. And then this wire right here is the 120 volt in. Simple knot is what holds it inside there as a strain relief. And this will be soldered in to the coil once we do the coil installation. Getting, to, getting ready to install the handles and controls back on and reverse switch. I'm gonna throw a little bit of this synthetic grease right up under in here. Of course, this procedure is the same for both sides. This little feather, he's gonna lay right in there. Then we're gonna use the carbon conductive grease and we're going to carbon conduct this area right here in the center. This guy will go in right on top of it. And since we didn't re need to make new ones of these, I'm gonna reuse these old ones because these are in still good shape. One goes here, one goes here, and then the reversing valve will go in plus two screws. We've got this pin that came out on the end. This guy goes in next, facing in. Then there's a spring. Contact tab goes in. This tab right here, it locks in, keeps it from rotating. Compress all that in. Get your little retainer pin. So when it's all assembled, it'll look like this with the separate controls. Now they look like they're hitting each other now, but they won't once they're up against the coil because they'll be sitting backwards like this. These control surfaces right here, they're timed to go on just one direction, but you do have to make sure when you put this aluminum plate in, because it's got these two holes here for timing, one's right side, one's left side. You'll see a black mark right there to show you the inside one is off. And there's a red mark right here, which will show you that the outside control is in the off position. So that's got to be, it can be put on anyway. So something to, to keep an eye on there. And these guys, you just put them on, they kind of lock into place and they're, and they're done. We are really close to putting this coil back in, but you notice how we don't, we don't really have any wires anywhere. It's actually pretty clean inside there. So I'm going to spend some time running all the electrical wires that I need from going off of my sweet schematic right here. Putting all these in place before I put the coil in, because the coil was the first thing we took out. This is gonna be the last thing we put in, so I'm gonna spend a little time and knock this out. Well, after about an hour of creative soldering, this is what I've come up with. All the wires on here, except for the transformer wires that I have marked, are now in there. Ran a little better. All of them are replaced. So now all that's left to do is install the coil, solder it up. Now that I got the main body, ready to put the coil in. We gotta get this old electrical connection off, sitting right up over here. So we're going to desolder these wires. And I've got my rollers that are being held back by some zip ties so I can just drop this thing in. I put these plates in and they're mounted loose. So I got a little, little free play. What about the easiest thing I've done so far? And we'll put these little fellers back in. Remember this coil brackets are being held in by these bolts underneath here. Get these off for our rollers. Now all these wires here that I've got marked, I'll just have to do some creative wiring to them. Get our circuit breaker, which is gonna go back over here, wired in. None of the rest of the wires got soldered in. The breaker sitting up here on the back side. Followed my skim mat. This is the first time doing it on camera. Hopefully it doesn't let out any magic blue smoke. Oh. Look at that. No smoke came out. Do we have voltage? I don't know why it's got 5.36 volts. 20.7 volts? My goodness. I'd like it better if it turned all the way off. 3 volts. I don't know why it wants to put out 5 volts though. It's because the end of this coil is putting out 5 volts. The end of this coil doesn't even look like it's, it's made out of plastic. How the hell does that work? 
<laughs> well, fellers, try to trace down that voltage leak there. Now, this part right here is Bakelite. All of my rollers are parked completely inside this Bakelite. They're not touching the coil at all. I did clean it for traces of carbon buildup that might have been up there, which would cause voltage to leak, but would not allow any amperage through. I dug through the forms and I found out that this thing was made in like 19, well, it was engineered in the early 40s. This is the first generation version one, 1945 to 48, I believe it was. Uh, it's very common for these things to have a little voltage leak through. So I put in a bulb, headlight bulb right here. Of course, the top bar is a common bar, so you know, it doesn't matter where this is hooked up at. So when I go onto this, I don't have any, well, what's 0 0.16. And then, of course, as soon as I crack the throttle, we're showing 6.59 volts, and the light bulb is doing what it does. So I would have to say that voltage leaks on your A, B, C, and D terminal is very, very common. So 0 0.16. Now, if I took this load, this light bulb load off, now I'm willing to bet, see, five volts. So it's voltage with no amperage coming through. As soon as we hook the light bulb load up, back down to no voltage leaking. Successful rebuild on this transformer. I'm quite happy. Let's take a quick little look at this before I button it all, before I button it all up. Let you put your eyes on it. See the inside of them. It's kind of neat how the coils and the rollers work in there for the different transformer controls. This is the area where the rollers park so the no voltage comes through at all. New circuit breaker mounted in right in there. This is the unriveted coil pack right there from the earlier generations. Yep, well sure. Handles and stuff come out real nice from just washing them with a little Dawn dish soap and a toothbrush. Clean them up real nice. Well you can see that that circuit breaker was in the way of the, the shell, the top part of it. So I had to end up stashing it down in here. You can see the two tips of it because uh, I've seen pictures of them sitting up there before but it must have been a different kind of style or something. So relocated it down here so we can get the shell on. I gotta tell you, that, that was a little difficult. That was kind of, sort of more than I thought it would be. Took a lot of time to knock it out, but boy, it sure looks pretty right now. Yes, it does. My last episode, I built a test track. This episode here, I got my transformer running. So now, finally, I can start diagnosing and working on my O27 and some of my S-gauge stuff. So, next videos that'll be coming out, it's going to be some repair videos on those. Thanks so much for watching. I appreciate your support. If you enjoyed what you've seen, think about subscribing. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.